Our next two guests know the spirit and fire of First Nation churches across the land. Joining us in studio is Terry LeBlanc from the Mi'kmaq First Nation. He leads My People International, which provides faith-based leadership development for Native communities. And joining us from Calgary is Pastor Ray Aldred. He's a member of the Swan River Cree Nation and a professor of theology at Ambrose University College and Seminary. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Terry and Ray, in an article you both wrote entitled uh, About Idle No More, you said the grassroots response to this, Idle No More, is here we go again. This is nothing new. Explain that for us. Terry, let's start with you. Well, I, I think Chief Stan Beardy uh, reflected it well. This isn't a recent phenomena. If you look at the history of Canada um, and, and extend it back before Canada became uh, the nation that it presently is, you find the same trajectory present in the treatment of Aboriginal people that has sought at every turn to subjugate and, and oppress and, and remove Aboriginal people from their land and their culture and their identity. And I think that's what Chief Beardy was, was really talking about. In 1960, we got the vote, um, which, which identifies us at that point as human beings in, in the Canadian context. And you both work closely with Native leaders. Uh, Ray, what voice does the First Nations Church then have in this debate? Bob Gutzfart said that you can't recycle, reduce and reuse isn't going to do it when it comes to the environment. He makes this statement, he says, the polar bears need to be at the table. And I think First Nations, because they're speaking up for the land in one way, are giving a voice for the land that doesn't have a voice. And we're called to be stewards of the land. Terry, tell me, what, what awakens then in the church as it tries to connect to this very real issue? Well, I, th I, mean, I think the church has, has really built itself around a theology that has ignored the rest of creation as a focus of God's or our Creator's concern. And, and the church has really built itself around a, a focus on the human soul and the salvation of the human soul and has discounted the rest of God's creation, the rest of what, what our, our Creator has made and placed us within as if somehow we're outside of creation and not a part of it. And, and I think Idle No More uh, has captured for many people, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal and Canadian and, and, and those around the world, the idea that we live in a very frail environment. And I'm not sure that people take that seriously enough. And uh, the voices that are speaking are, are saying, uh, you know, if we don't take it seriously now, we will never do. Ray, you have said that in this relationship of Aboriginal Canada, we need to think in terms of covenant and not contract. A lot of us are learning about treaties for the first time with this Idle No More stuff. What do you mean when you say covenant, not contract? The sweetgrass braid, there's one strand that represents the First Nations and one strand represents the newcomers and one strand represents the creator who witnessed this agreement that would be renewed every year and that we would live in a harmonious way in the land. That's the idea of covenant, that's the idea of treaty. And so these things were supposed to be discussed and worked out how we would share the land. And Idle No More is protesting the fact that our, there was just arbitrariness on the part of the federal government in passing the omnibus legislation. Many non-Aboriginals have lost patience and sympathy with this issue. Uh, Terry, what do you conclude about that? Well, I, I think people don't understand our history. Western civilization is always oriented toward the future, and so is the Christian church. It orients towards an eschatology, a time to be revealed. And it doesn't deal well with its past. Uh, and yet, if you look at the Christian scriptures, the Christian scriptures entirely take us into our history. God is always saying, remember when, remember when I brought you out of Egypt, remember when. Um, and, and this idea of moving from the present into the future without predicating, on, predicating it on an understood past is where a lot of Christians fail. Um, and so we repeat the errors of the past as a, as a part of that. Um, numbers of years ago now, I was preparing a talk about this very thing. and and was looking for an illustration that might help connect that time perspective for non-Aboriginal people. And I found a Field and Stream article that talked about the collapse of the East and West Coast fisheries. This was 1950, uh, 1997. 
and uh, it described the collapse of the cod fishery and the salmon fishery and so forth. And, and at the end of the article, it simply said, if we don't do something about it, there will be no more cod, no more salmon uh, to, to fish. And, and we would all agree with that in 1997. Uh, unfortunately, the article at the bottom of the page uh, in fine print said this article reprinted from Field and Stream, 1913. So history is really important. Ray, I want to close. Is it possible for you to discern the creator's hand in this present moment of very tense relationships between First Nations and non-First Nations? When Stephen Harper apologized in the House of Commons, he said that the government was, in effect, repenting from assimilationist policies. And the uh, idle no more, on one sense, is a, a prophetic voice because it's saying, well, then you have to actually do that. You have to change. This is a call to repentance. Whether Canadians listen or not, that's their choice, I guess. But I think it's the voice of God. Pastor Ray Aldred in Calgary, uh, thank you very much. And Terry LeBlanc, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now we want to ask what you think. Is it time to reinvent the relationship between First Nations and the government? Yes or no? Send us your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. Be part of the conversation in our studio audience. is going to take a live vote, and we'll have those results in a moment. But coming up, the life and witness of a First Nations saint. <laughs>